Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. The ancient Chinese poet Ouyang Xiao once said, Beautiful women are often destined for unfortunate fates, do not blame the east wind, but rather sigh at one's own beauty. Throughout history, beautiful women in ancient China often experienced tragedy and hardships, not because of any flaw in their beauty but rather due to the constraints of their era. However, in modern times, beautiful women enjoy freedom of development and exude confidence, reflecting the beauty of this era. For contemporary women, beauty is an extremely important asset that can bring certain advantages. However, in ancient Chinese society, a woman's beauty often posed an inherent danger, as most women in ancient times had little chance to hold more power than men, leading to their subjugation and dependence on men. The idiom, a beauty that brings disaster, is commonly used to describe a beautiful woman as a source of calamity. However, this is merely an excuse used by ancient men. Absurd things like, playing with fire amidst the warlords, would have happened even without women in power. Rather than saying beautiful women are, a beauty that brings disaster, it is more accurate to say that the destinies of beautiful women in ancient times were full of tribulations. One such example is Empress Xiao, often referred to as Xiao Empress. Due to her extraordinary appearance, she was taken advantage of by six men for over sixty years, even in her later years, she was still subject to male exploitation. So, what did Empress Xiao experience throughout her life? Who were the six men that took advantage of her? And what was her ultimate fate? It all began in the year 567 AD when the Empress of Western Liang Dynasty gave birth to a daughter who would later become Empress Xiao. Being born in the second month of the lunar calendar, which was considered inauspicious, many nobles were afraid to adopt her after her foster father, the Prince of Dongping, passed away. Eventually, her uncle Zhang could decided to adopt her as she belonged to the royal family and needed someone to care for her. However, Empress Xiao faced many hardships during her upbringing. In the year 582 AD, when she was 15 years old, Empress Xiao had grown into a great beauty, but due to the inauspicious label attached to her, she remained unmarried. In that same year, Emperor Wen of Sui was looking for a wife for his son, the Prince of Jin, within Liang's borders. Among all the princesses, only Empress Zhao's divination showed auspicious results, leading her to become the Prince of Jin's consort. The Prince of Jin became Empress Zhao's first husband, and they had a harmonious and pleasant relationship. Later, Emperor Wen had a dream about the royal family giving birth to a prince, and at that time, Empress Zhao was pregnant. This brought her significant attention, and even the Prince of Jin benefited from her status. With the assistance of Empress Xiao and others, the Prince of Jin successfully became the crown prince. Four years later, Emperor Wen passed away due to illness, and the Prince of Jin ascended the throne, becoming Emperor Yang of Sui, while Empress Xiao was officially named Empress. Emperor Yang of Sui's tyrannical and immoral rule put the Sui dynasty in a precarious position. Although Empress Xiao had advised Emperor Yang several times, he remained obstinate and disregarded any advice. In the year 618 AD, a coup took place in Jiangdu, led by Yuan Huaji and his army, they stormed Emperor Yang's palace and killed him. Yuan Huaji coveted Empress Zhao's charm and took her as his own, keeping her by his side. Not long after, Dou Jianda led his army to attack Yuan Huaji's forces and successfully took Empress Xiao, treating her as his forbidden pleasure. News of Emperor Yang's death reached the Turkic Khaganate, where the Khagan's wife, Princess Cheng, had a close relationship with Empress Xiao. After learning about Empress Zhao's situation, Princess Cheng requested the Turkic Khagan to take Empress Xiao. Soon, Dou Jianda met with the Turkic Khagan's emissary, who explained the Khagan's intentions. Forced by the circumstances, Dou Jianda had no choice but to agree, and thus, Empress Xiao followed the Turkic emissary and arrived in the Turkic Khaganate. Upon meeting Empress Xiao, the Turkic Khagan became enamored and decided to possess her. Faced with this situation, 
Empress Xiao could only submit and silently accept this reality. Due to the custom of having multiple wives, after the Turkic Khagan's death, his son claimed Empress Xiao. In 630 AD, Tang Taizong defeated the Eastern Turkic Khanate and obtained Empress Xiao from them, becoming the last person to possess her. Emperor Taizong treated Empress Xiao kindly, and she spent her later years peacefully. Seventeen years later, Empress Xiao passed away, ending her tumultuous life. Empress Xiao lived a long life and died at the age of 81. Emperor Taizong buried her together with Emperor Yang of Sui, finally closing the chapter on this legendary woman's life. Throughout her unfortunate life, she was labeled with many derogatory terms, but she remained resilient like a strong tree, never easily succumbing to fate. Empress Xiao symbolizes the deprivation of women in feudal society, proving that women in that era could not protect themselves throughout their lives despite their noble status. This phenomenon was even more widespread among commoners, where women had no rights to decide their own destinies, and they were often sacrificial pawns when those in power required them. This era should have ended with the end of feudal society. Today, the rights and interests of women have been significantly protected and upheld. They were not bullied or went through turbulent lives because of their beauty. Modern women can freely choose their paths in life, and their lives are not constrained by men. Compared to women in ancient times, they are undoubtedly fortunate. This is History and Culture Channel, like and subscribe are the biggest help and support for us, thank you everyone, see you next time.